Jordi on, on stage. Um, and Jordi is going to be talking about Polygon Hermes and especially introduction to the polynomial identity language. So uh, without further ado, let's welcome Jordi. Hello. Hello, everybody. Thank you very much. Uh, let me share my presentation right now. Well, first, first of all, before starting, I just uh, want to well welcome to the to the um, Polygon Zero people. Uh, it's a luxury to have them on board, and uh, very excited to, to work uh, with them. Uh, we already, as 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 uh, Daniel and Brandon already said, we have been already working with them in the last uh, in the last weeks, and has been very productive. And uh, I also want to thank you to the to the to the uh, Polygon founders for setting up this uh, collaborative environment in the technical things. I think that we can go much farther uh, together, helping uh, one each other as as a team. So it's going to be very uh, incredible, and, and I'm sure that we are going to scale Ethereum. That then is the goal that we have all together. So with that said, I'm going to present today the 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 pill. Uh, just to understand where the pill fits in the in the in the project. Uh, well, um, let me just here. Just a second. Let's see. How, okay. So uh, the, the the idea of so mm, the most critical thing for uh, rollup is generating this proof. Uh, generating this proof is, is 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 quite hard. But the idea of this proof is we have a node state. We have uh, many transactions. In the case of Hermes, we have uh, normal Ethereum transactions. We want to want, we want to be uh, EVM compatible by code, but by code we don't want to compile or just using the compiler. We just want to implement the actual by code. So we have normal Ethereum transactions, and we want to create a new state root. Okay. So building this uh, circuit is this deterministic program or this circuit is the, 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 the challenge. So to build this circuit, what we what we do is we have a, mainly what well, we are the, the project that we are built that we are following right now is we are building a stark and then in order to reduce the gas cost to uh, 300k or even lower is just to uh, verify this stark with a, a, a plonk or growth 16 uh, 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 proof. Okay, so this is the, the, the main approach. And um, the, the fact of using Starks, this, this is um, a little bit uh, a game changer between um, traditional R1CS systems like Plonk or uh, Glow 16 and uh, more polynomial, polynomial based. This is in, in comparing with electronics, this is uh, just working with normal ANDs and ORs, normal gates, and you just put them, a lot of them, or when you introduce the clock. When you introduce a clock in the circuit, you can reuse the same electronics and run many cycles. So here is where the polynomials takes uh, a very importance. You, when you read the word polynomial, just understand it as a, a array of values. At the end, a polynomial is a set of values. You know, what a line, you can represent a line by two numbers, while you can represent an, a, 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 a big polynomial with many numbers. So you just understand the values. And this works well in this concept of um, clock of a step. So you have a state machine, and every time in the state machine, you have a new value. And this is represented by a polynomial which gets in each step one, one value and so on. So, and, uh, and, and the, the idea of defining the, of, of defining this prover is that we need to define, we need to commit to a set of polynomials and then defining a set of um, relationships, identities uh, between these polynomials in order, in order to build these state machines that work together. And here is where the polynomial um, identity language is language that we created for creating these special these uh, relationships between polynomials and building these state machines. Okay, uh, what, with this relationship, with this uh, set of relationship, with this compiler, this will be used for generating the Starks, uh, for generating the, the 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 prover of the Stark, and then the verifier of the Stark. Okay, so. To start, I think the best way to understand how this uh, polynomial identity language is just work, uh, just uh, do an example of how this works. Okay, let's start with what would be the hello world of this language. In this case, is we are defining a very simple um, uh, state machine that actually computes 32-bit numbers through uh, from 
uh, two numbers of 16-bit numbers. So it's a state machine that has two steps, okay? So we just even steps and odd steps. In the even step, we just uh, get a number and put it in a register. And in the second step, we just shift the register and add the second number. And then we, and then we start over again. So we can generate as many 32-bit uh, numbers as we want. So we have one register, in this case is so one state uh, variable, in this case is out, and we have one input uh, that it's a value that we can put at any state, we can put the value that we want, we can put new each, each value, and every two steps we are generating one new 32-bit numbers. So how we would we write that in PIL? Okay, well, this is, would be as simple as that. We have a constant polynomial, it's a constant polynomial that's so the first is the first number is one, the second zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero. This is it's the, like the instruction what it's doing. Okay. We have the freeing the, the input of the system, the number that we freely can set to any number that we want. And we have the register itself, the register out. Okay. So in this, and, and then we start defining the constraints to these polynomials. The first constraint is that we are forcing that freeing is a third, it's a, it's a 16 bits numbers. Okay. In this case, we are doing it's included in another constant polynomial that we have defined it here in the on top that includes all the numbers between zero and FFFFF. So all the all the 16 bit numbers. Okay. So with this, we guarantee that the freeing can be any number, but just between zero and uh, zero X FFFFF. Okay. And then we define the 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 constraint. Uh, for this state machine. Actually, we are saying that the next step must be, um, if it's if set is one, if it's, so it's the first step, then this is gonna be one. The second part, uh, uh, this is gonna be zero. So the first, if, if it's one, we are just putting the input to the, uh, to, the, to the register, okay? If a set is zero, so it's the second step, then this is gonna be zero, but this second one is gonna be one. And then what we are doing is we are shifting the out and adding the free in. So every two steps, we are generating a number that we know for sure that's gonna be maximum 32 bits uh, number. Okay, so and we define it this, this, this way, okay? Let's move to a more complex uh, state machine. In this case, we are going to define state machines that generates um, groups of five numbers of 32 bytes numbers that fulfills this relationship. A times B plus C must be uh, D to, uh, two to the 32 plus E. Okay, so we are dividing this um, more significant bit and less significant bit. We're doing the arithmetic operation. In this case, is a multiplication and a division, okay? So how we do that, okay? We have a state machine with five registers, A, B, C, D, and E. And uh, the idea is that uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the five first um, steps, we are just latching, we are setting, uh, we, we are setting we are putting the, the, the input, we are setting these registers. We are setting A, we are setting B, we are setting C, we are setting D, and we are setting E. And once we have all the registers set, then we force the condition, okay? When we have to force the condition, well, we have this second, this, 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 this next polynomial, we call it latch. That's actually when you want to force that this condition fulfills. So we have a state machine where you just uh, load uh, um, five numbers, and then you, you, you are forcing that these five numbers are, uh, fulfills this um, condition. So how would we write that? Well, we will write this, we have this constant polynomial, set A, set B, set C, and set D, and set D. We have also the, the, the large polynomial, okay? And we have also the free, it's the input, and then we have the five registers, okay? And how, and here we start adding the, the constraints. The first constraints is we say free must be a 32 bits number. Here we here is the first thing that it's important. We are using the results of the other state machine, the bytes for the out. So this this free in must be a number that must be included in the bytes out for in, uh, dot out. That means that this number must be a 32 bit number because we have the conditions that we generated in the last state machine. Okay. Then we do the next. Uh, then we calculate the next state machine in case is the. A, a prime, B prime, C prime, and D prime. And this is if set A is one, then we just uh, set the free into A. And if it's zero, we just keep the last value. Okay, so this is the conditions for the next A, B, C, and D. Okay, and finally, when latch is one, we must fulfill that mul sum is zero. And mul sum is like an intermediate polynomial that we say that A times B plus C minus D to 32 plus C is, is um, 
and this must be zero in order to fulfill this, this operation when latch is one. So here we just define it, a state machine where we can do arithmetic operations. In this case, is this addition plus. So here you can do a, a, an addition just, if, for example, setting B to zero, or you can do a subtraction by setting A and B. We'll see in the next, in the next example how we, we, how we use this arithmetic um, uh, circuit. So let's now build something more complex, okay? Let's build a, a computer. Let's build a, a, a state machine that actually uh, execute instructions, okay? So here we have, uh, five uh, state, uh, have five registers, okay? We also have an, a sixth uh, um, register, we call it the program counter, actually is the line that I'm executing. This is another register that this is in this state machine. We have a bunch of polynomials that are the, that in somehow they are the instruction that I want to execute, okay? We'll see these polynomials, how this works, but this is the instruction, okay? We have also a free in, okay? And with this, we have a state machine to go from um, A to A prime is the next state of A. And we are evolving, we are executing. We can put any instruction that's defined by all these um, bits that, it com that compose the instruction and we are executing this, okay? So let's see different instructions, how this would work, okay? Well, first the definition would be just, we define all these, uh, all these uh, polynomials, okay? The same way that we saw before. Okay, we define here a set of, um, so for this, these instructions must fulfill some initial conditions. For example, we want that in A be binary. So we say that in A times in A minus one must be zero. Here, the only condition for this to happen is that in A is either zero or one. Okay, we want free in to be also a 32 bits numbers. We have in, in uh, we want also the constant to be also 32 bits numbers, but in this case, we are at um, uh, uh, an offset just so that const can be also positive and negative. So 32 bit numbers, but uh, uh, signet positive and big numbers. Okay. And the, uh, we have an address that just uh, 16 bit numbers is the byte to the one, the first one that we, we had. Okay. So let's do, let's start with uh, instructions that move uh, from A to B or from B to A or something like that. Okay. For these, there is part of the instruction that's it's A in A, in B, in C, in D. And in A, here we have, these are selectors of which uh, uh, register we want to, we have this intermediary register, we call it top, okay? So and the idea is we, we load uh, from A, B, C, D, and E, and we load to up, okay? This is the first line of the polynomial identity language. So if in A is one, then we load A. If in A is, if, if in B is one, then we load B, okay? We add them together. We can also set a const. Uh, we can also put a, a constant value. So the instruction can have a lot of constant value. For example, if we want to put a uh, seven in register A, then const would be, would, would be value seven, okay? And we also can select the, 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 the free in, okay? And we set, we have these set values to A, B, C, and D. So for example, if I want to move from B to C, then in B would be one, the other scenes would be zero, the cons would be zero, okay? And the set C would be one, and the set A, set B, set D, and set E would be zero, okay? So in this case, we, this will fulfill this uh, relationship. If I want to put a seven in D, then cons would be seven, all in A, in B, in C, in D, in E, and in three would be zero, and the uh, set D would be one, and the other sets would be zero, okay? And this is how we define and build these uh, instructions. So the instructions for moving, okay? We can also do um, uh, conditional jumps, jumps and conditional jumps. In this case is we have a circuit, we are, I'm not going to enter in detail how this works, but we have a circuit that uh, determines if the operator is zero or not, okay? And if it's zero and the instruction is a jump, okay? Then instead of loading the, program counter to the program counter plus one, we just load a new address. So we do a conditional jump in here just by defining how, we, so for seeing how, by changing how, by defining how we set, uh, which condition must uh, the program, the, the next program counter must, must, must fit, okay? So we have also, con so we have conditional jumps and we want to do also arithmetic operations. We can do, want to do multiplications, additions, and so on. And, 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 and how we do that, okay? And this is probably the most important um, uh, slide of my presentation, okay? Because this is the, the trick and, and the main thing the, the, that we are doing here, okay? So we here is we are connecting the last state machine, the state machine uh, uh, that do operations, 
and, and, the, and with the, the main state machine. When the main state machine, we have the, uh, the, the instruction arithmetic. When we, have, when we force, we have this arithmetic instruction, then we are saying that the, uh, the, the values in A, B, C, D, and the, op the op operator must be included in the last state machine, arithmetic A, arithmetic B, arithmetic C, and A. So somehow what we are doing is we are connecting um, we are, so we are saying in, in the main in the main state machine we are assuming that uh, some arithmetic function uh, is okay okay so we can set up freely we can put the values in the registers and we are saying okay this condition must fulfill and we assume that this is okay but this is because this is delegated the, the verification of this is delegated to the other state machine okay and this concept of connecting uh, different state machines with the block up. Again, thank you to the Aztec people with the block up uh, idea. This is a great thing. This allows us to connect these state machines. And this is what allows us to do engineering. We can generate like many state machines that are doing different things and connect them all together. Okay. So, um, yeah, this would be, of course, now we have a processor. So we have a processor, then we need to define an assembly. This is a little bit how we wor would work the, the, the assembly. Okay, we define this from going from one register to other, and we have the arithmetic or the jumps operation. So this is an assembly. But there is something that's uh, missing here, and it's how we warranty, because how we warranty that we are executing the right program. We, we, we want to have like a ROM, we have want to have a program and we want to force that we're executing a program because if we see here, uh, this is, this, these are free inputs. You can put any instruction that you want. This is okay, it will fulfill these uh, relationships, but how do, can I create a ROM and execute this program? Okay, well, so let's move forward. And we create this, uh, from this assembly, we create this, uh, uh, we create this, uh, uh, table, so we, we uh, encode these instructions with, with bits, we have in A, in B, in C, in D, and we create what we call it a ROM. A ROM at the end is another polynomial where the first instruction, the second instruction, the third instruction, and we encode the, all these polynomials, somehow this is a mini polynomials, we have the constant, the constant value, which is wider than address, and we also embed the line with the line of the the line of the program. This is the first line, but the line zero, line one, line two, line three, line four, and five, okay? So we have a set of values, and with this, we have a polynomial, okay? We have a polynomial, it's the ROM, okay? And we want to guarantee that we are executing this ROM. And how we do that? With, again, with a single block up. We're taking all the polynomials that compose the instruction, the address, the set A, set B, jumps, arithmetic, all the, the instruction all together. We pack the same way that we did it in the ROM, Instead of having the line, in this case, we have the program counter. It's the program counter indicates which line should be executed. And then we just force in the last is that in trace is included in the ROM. With this condition, we warranty that we are executing actually uh, uh, a ROM. Okay. So with this, we, we can have a ROM that executed that uh, a ROM. So we have a processor with a ROM that's executing. And all that define it with uh, polynomial identities. With this, with this language, okay? Of course, um, the EVM, for building the EVM, the state machine is similar to this, but with much more complex. We have, of course, instead of working with 32 uh, bits operations, we're having 256 operations. We need to deal with the gas, we need to deal with the maximum, we need to deal with the stacks, we need to deal with the calls. So there are some extras because we are tailor mating this, uh, uh, so this, this processor in order to execute of codes, Ethereum of codes. So this is why we are adding this, this um, you know, fine tuning things that will help us to implement the, the opcodes, but they, they are the same. Of course, will be many other state machines like, you know, Kekax, um, 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 signature verifications, uh, comparators. Well, there is a lot of, it's a lot of, a lot of uh, state machines, but with this, we will create the, the full uh, Ethereum virtual machine. So summarize is we have this spill language. This is like the hardware layer. You know, it's a, we are defining these state machines that work together. We have, a, a, with this, we define the, 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 the state machine. We have an assembly, okay? And with the assembly, we create a ROM, which actually has a specific program. And it's a program that actually implements Ethereum. It's actually, it's a program that process, as an input process, many transactions, 
and, uh, and, and calculates the new state. So actually, it's a, a, a single process that ex ex executes all this, okay? We have an executor that actually is the, the runtime, the, the thing that takes up the transactions and actually creates these uh, uh, polynomials. And then uh, with this, we generate the star. This is better represented in this nest slide, okay? So we have the executor, the executor generates a proof. Of course, here we have an, uh, an assembly, we have a, a ROM, we compile that to an assembly, to a, you know, and this we, 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 we plug it to the executor, the executor generates a start, okay? With the PIL language, we generate the, we, we compose the Stark, and the, with the PIL language through Circom and all the, all the, uh, the Stark, we generate a, a, a circuit to validate the Stark, and then this is, uh, then at the, at the end is verified in solidity. So this is, the, the process is very much, uh, is very much this. Of course, the prover is not the only, the prover is not the only thing that we have to implement. The prover is just a piece of our running of Uzi KVM. There is also a node with all the you know, transaction pools and uh, so on. And of course, all the smart contracts, layer one, layer two here. Uh, if you want to see how we are going to do all the transfers, layer one to layer two, we have a, uh, I did a presentation in LISCON, so you can find it in YouTube, you can find there. And of course, uh, we also have uh, this, uh, Coordinator selector. We have a new protocol. We call. We, we now improve efficiency. Probably we'll have some opportunity to explain how it works. But this also what gives the centralization. But so all these pieces what we are building somehow in in Hermes. And the planning for Hermes, of course, this is not a full commitment. This is is the pro project we are doing is quite challenging. But this is the the this is the the schedule that we are managing internally. We are very excited right now. We are running very fast. We have an incredible team right now that's very motivating for doing this. I think we have, at least in my eyes, we have the best team in the world for creating that. Uh, we are very. I, I, I'm sure that we are going to get it. We are very, really, very, 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 very excited, and uh, yeah, uh, um, looking forward and uh, hope to scale Ethereum very soon. I don't know if there is any questions, but that's all on my side. Thanks so much, Jordi. Um, there's a couple of common recurring themes in the questions, which is uh, people want to know how they can learn uh, this on their own pace, uh, because there's a lot that happened in this talk, and uh, people are curious if they can find out whether it's a copy of your uh, presentation to other links to understanding where uh, you've talked about PIL. I will make it copy, and everything we're doing is open source, so uh, sometimes we are not publishing right now because we are changing very much and it's sort of things like that but uh we will open very soon as as the pieces get more consolidated and uh yeah you can check at our polygon hermes repo and there is a lot of information there awesome 